So a couple of months ago, I took a look at recursive component and ng template uh, rendering inside of Angular. And in response to one of those posts, a reader asked me to provide an example, uh, like a folder structure in which each one of the folders could be toggled open and closed, and how would I persist that state? So for example, here I have my folders, and you can see that each folder can have folders and files, and folders can of course contain folders, which can contain other folders and files, uh, arbitrarily uh, and uh, ad infinitum. So this could be a infinitely, well not infinitely, but you know, a deeply nested structure here and I could just keep going. And of course here I can collapse them all and I can expand them all so you can see the extent of the data here. Um, and one thing to notice too is that uh, to make the demo a little bit more exciting, as I expand and collapse folders, I'm actually storing the expanded state in the URL or persisting the expanded state to the URL such that if I now refresh the browser, you'll see that it returns to the exact same rendered state. Of course, this makes it easy to uh, bookmark things or to pass a URL to another team member or to another user who will then of course see exactly what you're seeing. So how are we implementing this recursively nested data structure and keeping track of the expanded state of the various folders? Well, there's a bunch of ways to do this, and the way I chose is just one of a number of valid ways. And essentially what I'm doing is I am separating out the folder structure from the concept of the expanded folders. So if we actually jump into my sample data here for a second, what you'll see is that the data is a combination of these two data structures. It's folders and folders can contain other folders or they can contain files. Now what you'll see here is that we have UID, name, folders, files, and then each file is just a UID and a name. And what you'll notice is that there is no concept of expanded or collapsed on a folder interface. And that's because again, I am extracting the concept of the expanded folder into its own data structure that lives parallel to the folder structures themselves which of course means that when we go to render this structure, we have to pass in both the root folder as well as the collection of expanded folders. Now, each approach is gonna have certain trade-offs. This is just an approach that I chose so that I didn't have to bake the concept of expanded into the core data structure, and it also meant I didn't have to translate a data structure into something owned by the app component, and it also meant that I was uh, more easily able to keep the root folder as immutable, which becomes more important when we care about things like on push change detection that only respond to changes in input and local events. Anyway, I don't mean to get too distracted there, all to say that the approach that I have chosen is one of many valid approaches, and this is simply uh, the preference that I use for this particular demo. Now, that said, in order to maintain an immutable data structure and a set of unidirectional data flows, as we pass the data into the component, we then have to listen for changes that come out of the component. So for example, when I, as a user, go to toggle this folder, that toggle is actually emitting an event that's bubbling up through this data structure and being captured by the app component, which is then being used to mutate this expanded folders view model. And that's where this toggle folder event comes in. And if we jump down here, um, what we can see is that when you, request, uh, when you request the toggling of a folder, I look to see if it's currently toggled. If it's not, I simply add it to the expanded folders view model. And if it is, then I essentially splice the, uh, the value out of the expanded folders view model, uh, of course, creating new data structure references, again, for that immutability, that unidirectional data flow, that on push change detection within my Angular component. Now, what you'll notice is that I'm not rendering the root folder directly. Instead, I'm rendering a folder tree component, which will then handle the rendering of the root folder. Now, I could have easily tried to render the root folder itself, which would then call itself recursively, uh, but in general, I try to create a layer of encapsulation between the invocation of the recursive workflow and the actual implementation of the recursive workflow. And what this does is it allows the recursive implementation to evolve independently of the calling context, independently of the app component, creating a separation between how I wanna consume 
the concept of the folder tree from how the folder tree is actually implemented under the hood. Now the folder tree is what's going to take care of initiating that recursive rendering. So let's jump into the folder tree. The folder tree is super simple. You can see that the entire template here is again just the rendering of that root folder. Then the folder component will go ahead and start recalling itself recursively. So this is the initiation of the recursion and then the folder uh, handles the actual recursive call itself. And we can see here from the folder tree component, uh, almost nothing is happening. Um, you'll see that the folder tree component has the uh, toggle, or we can see it, it has the toggle folder event, which you'll notice that the folder also has a toggle folder event. So the encapsulation here has to essentially bubble up those same events so it has the same inputs and output bindings. But again, because this is now encapsulated inside of my folder tree component, the local API here can begin to evolve independently of how the app component is consuming it. That said, let's jump into the actual folder component because this is where the actual recursive magic happens and is probably the more interesting part of this entire demo. Now to make the folder component easier to reason about, I've actually split out the template URL into its own file in order to demonstrate here that the folder component itself is incredibly simple, right? This is the entirety of it. And you'll see like the folder tree, it also has the toggle folder, it takes expanded folders and a folder reference. The only thing that it has in addition to that is this is expanded local view model state. And this is what determines whether or not we are rendering the contents of the folder, right? Here it's collapsed, is expanded equals false. Here it's expanded, is expanded equals true. We're seeing the files and the folders underneath. Now, because this is all dealing with immutable data and because we're using on push change detection, what we know is that we can calculate the is expanded state based on any changes to the inputs. So that's why we have our ng on changes here, which means that this is going to get invoked anytime our uh, expanded folders collection changes or our folder reference changes. And at that point, we can calculate the current is expanded state by checking to see if the folder UID exists in the collection of expanded folders that's being passed down recursively through this folder data structure. Now let's jump into the template itself so that we can see how the is expanded and the recursive call gets implemented. So here is the template. You can see we have a header and a body essentially. The header is just the name, uh, but you'll see here that on click we call toggle folder with the current folder, right? That's the this action here, clicking to toggle. And then if the folder is expanded, we include this contents and part of the content rendering is looking at the folders contained within this folder, ng4 iterating over them, and then using the same exact component reference to render the subfolder recursively, right? So if we jump back into the folder tree, you can see that the folder tree starts by rendering the my folder component, and then the my folder component renders itself by also recursively calling the my folder component. And here we pass down the subfolder instead of the current folder, and that's what creates the recursion. And then of course we also propagate the expanded folders down through the data structure. But then we also have to propagate the toggle folder events back up through the data structure so that they can eventually be captured by the app component used to mutate the expanded folders view model, which will then be passed back down through the data structure to manage the is expanded calculations. Now what you'll notice here is that the toggle folder method is actually being used to propagate both the subfolder events and also to handle the click on the, on the uh, folder itself. So essentially in a recursive call, these toggle folder event emitters become chained such that events triggered deeply within the recursive, recursive call can bubble back up to the calling context through all the recursion, through the folder tree, which then propagates that event back up through its own event emitter, which will eventually, you'll see, get handled by the app component, which takes that uh, referenced folder, uses it to expand, uh, to change the expanded folders view model, and that expanded view uh, folders view model eventually gets piped back into the folder tree. The folder tree then 
pipes that back down into the root component, and then the root component, or the root folder component, then continues to pipe it down through the recursive call. So we get this unidirectional data flow even through recursive invocation of components, even when those components contain a local state, such as the is expanded value here, which again is being calculated based on the input bindings. So recursion is pretty awesome. And um, recursive components can build some pretty interesting user experiences like this, where I have arbitrarily nested folders and files and allow me to track things like uh, the state of the expanded components, even across page refreshes. So hopefully this has been interesting. Uh, hopefully it's kind of highlight how exciting recursive components can be in an Angular application and maybe demonstrated one of the several ways in which you could easily track a state within a recursive data structure um, in your Angular apps. So anyway, uh, recursion, just super exciting, and hopefully this was uh, interesting.